Hello, everyone! We're gonna do a little something kind of different. We are going to watch Anita Shark Girl talk about one of my favorite shows, Powerpuff Girls. Uh, if you don't like that show, then don't want to tell you. But yeah, I've been on a Powerpuff Girls kick uh, recently, so I've just been... Uh, so when I was watching an episode, I was like, Oh, this is an episode that Anita Shark Girl was talking about one in one video, and uh, yeah, so that's why I'm deciding to do this video because this video did come out in 2011, so it's kind of irrelevant. But I think it's still gonna be fun to talk about because uh, again, I got into uh, Powerpuff Girls again, and uh, I grew up with that show, and here you go, here we go. So let's get started. <laughs> By the way, I don't know if you can see this, but it says, you know, conversation with, with pop culture and bitch media. Bitch media. A trope is a common pattern in a story or a recognizable attribute in a character that conveys information to the audience. A trope becomes a cliche when it's overused. Sadly, some of these tropes often perpetuate offensive stereotypes. <laughs> Every now and then in Hollywoodland, a character that's identified as feminist will make its way through the production process and appear on our television screens. Unfortunately, this is almost never good. What the Hollywood machine turns out is a distorted and warped version of feminism, which bears little resemblance to actual feminist movements. In a desperate quest to distance themselves, their plots, and their characters from anything that could in any way be mistakenly mistaken for feminism, Hollywood writers rely on one of the most deceptive and disgusting tropes ever to be forged in the fires of Mount Doom. That trope is called the straw feminist. In television and movies, the straw feminist works by deliberately creating an exaggerated character of a feminist, which writers then fill with a bunch of oversimplifications, misrepresentations. I just like how she's assuming that, oh yeah, when they have a feminist, they all, it represents every all feminists, and it's like you don't think that maybe. Maybe the character that they're writing is this one specific person? Like, oh, this one person might have just taken feminism and, uh, is doing shitty sh shit with this? Like, they're not vilifying feminism as a whole. Just, vi just villainizing this one person because she's taking something. She's taking feminism and is using it for some, you know, corrupt thing or she has her own misrepresentation of feminism. That might have been the point of that character. It's not that it's, that that point of the character is to um, dissuade feminism or to uh, destroy it. It's probably just to uh, show how people can use feminism in a raw, in a misguided way. And stereotypes to try to make it easy to discredit or delegitimize feminism. The goal is to make feminists and our movements look completely ridiculous, over the top, and unnecessary. In terms of media rep How do you know? How do you know that was what they were going for? See, this is the issue I have with Anita. Well, one one of the many issues I have with her is that she makes these broad generalizations and she makes these statements as if she knows the process of, of writing characters and all that. I mean, it's like that's like saying that's like saying like oh well every time they, there's a black person in uh, on TV it's going to be a gangster like you know that would be a silly uh, comment to make because that's not always the case and it's not always the case that when you see a feminist in a show that, that oh that represents all of feminism or anything it's just it's a silly fucking thing to 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 bring up. Because she doesn't know, she doesn't know the point of the characters are. But we'll get more to that as this goes on. Presentation. One of the most disturbing examples of this drop feminist can be found in the third season of Veronica Mars. Sadly, the Veronica Mars writing team turned the last season into a train wreck, partially by introducing a group of straw feminists as the villains in the series. Characters like these serve to undermine and discredit feminist movements, but they also serve to separate female leads who are smart and strong and witty, in this case Veronica, from any association with feminism. The straw feminist character is part of a fictional post-feminist world that only exists in Hollywood. 
The trope is a tool that's used to promote the fallacy that everyone is already equal. What's exceptionally frustrating is these characters often bring- But like, to ignore the strides that we've made for gender equality is- To ignore that would be- is fucking dumb because, like, I'm not saying that, oh, well, uh, you know, we're there, we're, we're all equal and we're, and we're there, we're not there yet. But we've had made strides. Like, you know, now women can be enlisted to the draft. Now, the whole thing is that with... I don't want to get too much into that, but... Uh, I, I, I see both sides of this argument, but one, one, of the, one of them I saw was that... You know, it's not that they... that This, this particular person, I don't... I, I'm not going to speak for everyone, but this one person brought up a good point that... You know, it's not really that, oh, well, now we can be drafted, that's wrong. It's just that... You know, we wanted other things to, to go through uh, legislation, and we want other things to prove uh, gender equality, but to use this draft as, like, the end-all, be-all thing is ridiculous, and that's true. I mean, it's like, it, it's just that, like, you know, out of all things that, that, that they wanted uh, to happen to, to bring women more close, closer to equality, as we're going through, except for this draft, and... You know, it's like it's like you know, it's fine that this that this happened, but you know, we we there there should have been more than just this, and I kind of agree with that. But um, you know, it, but yeah, the one, but then the people are saying like, oh, this, you know, who are against the women going in the draft are are fucking stupid. But people who are saying like, you know, it's fine that that this went through, but you know, there's other stuff that you know should have gone through as well. Is is where I tend to agree. Is that there's other stuff because like, there is things that might not be uh, equal yet, and I don't want to say like oh there is oh we're there or that we're not there or anything like that because it's just you know I I can't really speak for women because I am not a woman I have not encountered any sexual discrimination so I can't it would be ill of it would be wrong of me to to talk about it as if I'm an expert of being discriminated but I can. Talk about like because I do I do respect feminism, but the ones that actually focus on good points and are well um, educated and, and they speak well about what they're standing for, not like Anita that's just trying to change media and trying to find sexism where it's not there. Because like, this whole thing, I I feel that she had a good intentions and I said this about the uh, video games versus tropes thing, but she doesn't do any significant research or anything but let's continue with this bring up legitimate feminist concerns about women's rights and women's equality but those concerns are quickly undermined by the writers making the characters seem over the top crazy and extremist for example the straw feminist appears in married with children as marcy darcy the <clears throat> irritating and pompous neighbor in this case the straw feminist is coded as the castrating wife who emasculates and dominates her docile stupid husband we see this trope repeated in Rugrats with Phil and Lil's mother, who Wikipedia describes as quite the jock and women's liber. And we can also recognize her as a straw feminist because of the giant woman symbol on her sweater. Much like Marcy, she's framed. But like, no one hates um, their, the, mo the mom. I've not seen- Betty, that's her name, Betty. No one has complained about her, no one dislikes her, I mean I've not heard any- I, don't, I haven't heard a lot of people criticize Betty. Like, to me, Betty is, you know, a good character. She's funny. She's, you know, she's there. She doesn't do anything bad. And yeah, her husband is kind of a doormat, but like, you know, it. it he, I, I, I don't sit there and say, and say like, oh, well, obviously he's, he's there because she forces him to be there and that, and you know, it's an unhappy marriage. I mean, they obviously, you know, get along with each other, but like, they don't, portray Betty as a as, as a strong feminist either like you know the the logo is the only thing like kind of the way she talks I guess and the way that she dresses but it's never like it's not in a negative light that that's the thing is that Betty is never shown in a negative light as far as I know as far as I remember uh, I don't remember ever seeing Betty and be like oh it's her or anything like that's kind of annoying because she, she's just a character. No one complains. I've heard more people complain about Dee Dee. Um, uh, I think that's her name, Dee Dee. The, uh, Tommy's mom, but 
uh, whatever. I mean, that, and that, that's a very small group of people who don't like her either, so it's... ...trained as the castrating wife who barks orders at her submissive husband. In 2001's Illegally Blonde, the writers threw in a straw feminist for... But that happens! There are submissive husbands out there, so it's, it's a relatable because you see that. I mean, there's also submissive wives, but, like, you've seen couples like that. ...laughs, who believes that the word semester is an evil conspiracy against women. Take the word semester, okay? This is a perfect example of this school's discriminatory preference of semen to ovaries. That's why I'm petitioning to have next term be referred to as the winter ovester. Another problem- But that's just a- that's just a dumb joke. Like, no, that's not meant to be taken seriously. Legally Blonde isn't like a fucking, uh, government- like, an agenda piece or something, or like something that's like supposed to make like big, like push the envelope. It's fucking Legally Blonde. Dramatic example comes from the Powerpuff Girls episode Here Equal Fights in the third season. The girls encounter a female villain named Femme Fatale, who we can immediately see is a straw feminist because she has the oh-so-terrifying woman symbol on her mask, her clothes, and even as her weapon. Here we go. The episode begins with the traditional pan around Townsville, showing us that gender inequality is not a problem. A city where everyone gets their fair turn. Even boys and girls on the playground get along. Your turn, Jenny. Yeah, because kids aren't inherently sexist or racist. Uh, no, they're not. Kids are kids. Uh, so, yeah. Oops. Very funny, Joey. You're gonna get it. <laughs> but this harmonious balance is deep. But the whole thing, like, with the Inarius and saying, oh, equal turns, all that, it's fucking, like, the style of Powerpuff Girls, well, the original, kind of has this kind of, like, 60s type, uh, show, like, it, it, we just listen to the narration, like, it's it's like you, it's a narration you would see in, like, old shows, it's like, oh, look at, you know, whatever. So it's kind of, like, there just to be there, it's not trying to, uh, you know, whatever, let's continue. Previously disrupted by Femme Fatale and her connivingly deceptive women's rights rhetoric. Yes! Yes. Her, her being a feminist is way more important than her robbing a bank. I just want to make that clear. She's not a bad guy because she's a feminist. She's a bad guy because she's robbing a fucking bank. I'm sorry, Anita Shark Girl, but Femme Fatale is a villain because she robs a bank. Not because she's a feminist. No. No, 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 no. She's using feminism as a way to rob a bank. She's using that as her gimmick. It's, if anything, feminists should actually be against Femme Fatale because she's using feminism as a way to rob banks. She's not someone to look up to. She's not a character that should be taken as the idol of feminism or anything like that because she's a fucking villain. She's robbing a bank. She's already doing something that shouldn't be glorified. Why should we care? That, oh, she's misrepresenting misrepresen feminism. She's robbing a bank. Do you really want a bank robber to represent fucking feminism? Robbing a bank should be taking precedent over her being a feminist. Just because she has, uh, you know, a, uh, the, uh, she has iconography of, uh, of, um, of a female, female, uh, symbolism all over her doesn't mean that, oh, well, it's just, it's sexist. It's fucking stupid. Seriously, though, Femme Fatale brings up some pretty valid points about We're the lack of female sexist, faces but... on American money or the lack of female superheroes in pop culture. Surely you've noticed. Fe well, you know what? That, that does... But see, that's the point of this show, is that it shows points on both sides of the aisle. It's saying... It's showing that, yes, there is some uh, discrimination against women, like... You know, there's not a lot of fe uh, female superheroes that stand in their own that, that stand in their own right. Uh, there's no like, no, no, the currency doesn't have a woman uh, on it, etc., etc. Like it brings up good points, but that's the thing is that it also brings up good points there, and it brings up good points on the other side. This show, this episode, is showing people who are using feminism as a way to excuse their bad behavior. Like, oh. Well, I should be treated better because I'm a woman. That's what. That's the point. It's not showing that 
And she doesn't even go, get to the end of the episode. She doesn't even show the revelation that, like, you know, she is going to these extremes. I wonder why Anita doesn't talk about the end of the episode. I wonder why. Female superheroes aren't nearly as revered as male superheroes. Sure they are. They're Supergirl, Batgirl. Wonder Woman. No one brings up Wonder Woman. What? There's Wonder Woman. There's Huntress. Well, actually, Huntress used to be a, a hero. Now, I guess in uh, Green Arrow, she's a bad guy now. Don't know why. Um, uh, Captain uh, Miss Marvel. Um, I mean, there. I mean, there, yeah. There's still not a lot. There could be more, but like, yeah. They're so lame. Oh, but They're now, now, I wonder why Anita isn't talking about Marvel because she did talk about how she is against uh, just making male characters women, and Marvel is doing that now. There, uh, yeah, yeah. Marvel is making uh, Iron Man a woman, a black woman, and it's like, to me, it's fine to have more diverse heroes. You can com you can say that you want more diverse heroes. You might want more women heroes and all, uh, colored heroes. That's fine. I have nothing against that. I actually would, would welcome that. But don't take established characters and just change it like that. Because to me, that's lazy. It's a lazy design and it's lazy. Uh, it's a lazy answer. It it's just, you get nothing out of it. So why do it that way? But whatever, let's continue. The extensions of their male counterparts. The girls are influenced by femme fatale's malicious rhetoric to see benign, routine, everyday things as a conspiracy against women. Because they're kids. When you talk, when you, that's why you, you know a lot of parents don't go into the heavy shit with kids because they tend to take things too far and they and they uh, might misunderstand. They might take and they might go to extremes because. They're kids. They're not going to listen to this and be rational adults because they're not adults. They're not people who have been in the world, who who have seen these issues or been taught uh, these issues well. Uh, they're kindergartners. When you go to kindergarten, they're not handling fucking po uh, politics. They're handling how to share crayons and all that shit. They're not fucking, you know, oh, okay, kids, what's wrong with, with the world today? You know, they're not talking about real world issues. So of course, when they're gr when they're greeted with real world issues, they're gonna take it too far, because that's how they are. They're kids. That they're kids. And against them personally, the writers of the Powerpuff Girls have carefully created a fantasy world without gender oppression, so that they can have the girls start seeing oppression where none exists. <laughs> I would like to see her watch an, uh, the episode where uh, the Powerpuff Girls tries to uh, join the Hall of Glory, the Hall of Justice. It's the episode where a Major Glory is in it. Uh, like, they're trying to join, like, the Justice League type thing, uh, but they happen to be all guys, and they're like, no, we're not gonna take, you know, they, they do this uh, trials uh, and all that kind of stuff. That episode introduced gender oppression by just having them not... Uh, join their organization because they're they're little girls and then they prove them wrong and that episode works because it's comedic and it also bring it also talks it shows these characters as kind of jerks but uh you know it's it, it's not overly done where it, where it makes you hate uh the male characters a lot but it makes you just say like these guys are are jerks and then you know they get their just their uh their just desserts by the end of the episode, and that is a great episode because it doesn't piss off people. Like I I don't remember anyone getting pissed off during that episode when it aired, and it and right now like when I, when I watched it, it didn't come off as a feminist propaganda piece. It, it because right off the bat you like these characters, you like Blo uh, Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup. You like those characters; they're very likable. And when you see this, you're naturally going to be on their side in that episode because you like these characters. You had time to develop, to get, a, to uh, like these characters because this was a fourth season show, and you know you're meant to like these characters. So when they get turned down, you naturally side with the Powerpuff Girls and not 
the uh, Hall of Justice because you naturally could see that they're fucking idiots by not letting them join their their ranks. But Anita won't talk about that episode because then it would dissolve her argument of that the Powerpuff Girls has a fancy world of no gender oppression or anything. And, you know, and let alone she's not even talking about the ending of the episode that kind of puts everything into context, context and perspective because, again, it would dissolve her argument. There you go. Joey Finkelmeyer. What'd I do? Shut up! <laughs> Don't play- And this is also done for laughs. This is just meant to be, uh, to, to be kind of humorous that these girls are taking this too far. Like, they're, they're just overly, uh, they're, they're just, they're just taking it too far, that's all. Dumb with us. I finally caught up on all the housework and all that's left is your room. Oh, I wonder if she's gonna talk about how they made uh, Professor Utonium U- looked like a woman by having him, like, with his little, like, hairnet thing, uh, a feminine apron. No, no, she's not gonna talk about that, because who cares about the professor? And, you know, he's cleaning the entire house, and he's just asking them to clean their room. If you could take care of that, please. Uh, uh, I'll just do it later. Why don't you get some big, strong man to save your precious city? Or, better yet, why don't you stop making women do your dirty work and do it yourself? The problem is, all of these things that the Powerpuff Girls are complaining about are actually happening. Girls are getting bullied on school year. Okay, let's talk about that. It, again, if she goes to the ending of the episode, which, again, will dissolve her fucking argument, uh, she, uh, the Powerpuff Girls get greeted by Miss Bellum, uh, Miss Keen, and uh, a, per, a, um, a, a, a female police officer. Uh, so when they talk about the uh, playground scene, the girls bring that back and like, oh, well, we saw what oh, this guy did to this girl, and Miss Keen was instantly ready to be like, oh, there was bullying? Like, she was ready to, like, be authoritative in that in that regard. And then they're like, well, it looked like that they were playing, so, you know, then it's like, oh, yeah, well, they were, they were playing. But bullying isn't a sexism issue. It's an issue. Bullying is wrong no matter who the victim is. We should not, we should not divide bullying between genders because that's fucking retarded bullying is wrong period everyone gets bullied everyone the the bully doesn't care if you're black white girl boy anything they will just bully you because they're because they're bullies they're bullies um and it's a it's a very tricky subject bullying and to f- to go further and divide it between genders is even worse. It's even worse. Because then it, go- it adds another discussion on top of that. When the discussion should just be bullying versus the victim. Like, we should just stop bullying. Why, why divide it by sexes? Why? Why, Anita? Why did you bother bringing up this sexism issue with bullying? Bullying is not has nothing to do with it. Bullying is its own issue because bullying is wrong. If It's wrong. It's wrong, wrong, wrong. Don't fucking d- divide it further by genders. Because then it's going to be like, well, uh, what's bullying for men and what's bullying for women? No, bullying is bullying. No matter what. No matter what. And the bully could be a woman, too. Does Like, are you going to really start dividing genders on bullying? Because then... No, it's so fucking stupid. No, 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 no. And again, in this episode, they dissolve it by saying, well, they weren't even bullying each other in the playground. They were playing. And women are overwhelmingly responsible for household duties. Yeah, but not the Powerpuff Girls. In that context, the professor, who is a single parent, who is a guy, who is a dad, he has a penis, I uh, cleaned the entire house, and all he asked his daughters to do was clean their room. Any parent would tell you that's a reasonable demand. That's very reasonable, because every kid, every kid gets told to clean their room. Every single kid. So, to bring this up would mean that, so... Should the professor just clean the entire the entire house? I mean, at that point, Professor Utonium 
is a is the fucking cleaning lady in the house because he's cleaning the entire house. All they had to do was clean the and was clean their one room. I mean, yeah, there was one episode where they had to clean the house for, uh, to get chores, but that wasn't a reasonable demand. That was a reasonable demand as well because kids also get told that as well. But this isn't. It's just the context is very important. If mm. Women are being institutionally oppressed all the time in nearly every facet of our lives. Yes, yes, the Powerpuff Girls are institutionally oppressed all the time by being told to clean their one room. That little kid who uh, who uh, threw the ball at Sally by accident said, "Oops, sorry," and, and it was an accident. Oh yeah, that was she. He was bullying her. He should get pun he should get punished for that. But oh, you know, it, it happens. But, yeah, all this stuff is all institutional sexism. Not not at all, like, there's no context to to this that makes sense, that shows that the girls are just overstepping what they learned, and they took what they learned to the extreme. No, 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 that's not the lesson at all. And femme fatale, her being a feminist is the, is the reason why she's the bad guy. Not because she's robbing banks, that's just a accessory. That's just an accessory. Once again, this trope is used to separate the Powerpuff Girls from any notion that they could in any way possibly be feminist characters. Yes, obviously, because no feminist at all on the planet Earth, I guarantee, well guarantee, that no feminist would ever cite the Powerpuff Girls as a source of inspiration or a role model. Not at all. Because, honestly, the Powerpuff Girls being girls are, are just there just to be there. Uh, because obviously, the Powerpuff Girls should state that we're feminists. Because obviously, they can't be feminists because they're not stating that they're feminists. And they're fighting a woman a woman that is stating that she is a feminist by just having feminist rhetoric and robbing banks. Obviously, she is the one that we should be rooting for. Not the three superheroes that are girls that fight bad guys and have villains that also happen to be male. And, well, most of them, anyway. And, um... Their dad, who does a lot of housework that you would naturally see a, a mom would do, but, like, he's a dad and he's a single parent. No, 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 no. Obviously, the Powerpuff Girls cannot at all be seen as a way to promote feminism or to give women uh, any sense of a role model to look up to. Not at all. Uh, Craig McCracken... Lauren Faust, if you're watching this video, you guys are sexist pigs, and you should really be ashamed that you made a show that had these three strong uh, women who fight crime uh, and kind of dismantle the patriarchy of superheroes and all that kind of shit. You should be ashamed because you had them destroy a character who used feminism uh, in, a, in, a, in a bad way and was robbing banks. How dare you? Because, you know, awesome, funny, world-saving, independent young women, but, you know, not feminist. Yeah, I mean, they can't be feminist because they, because they fight femme fatale, and they kind of, at the end of that episode, they kind of found more reasons, and they used... Oh my god, I need to shut the fuck up. See, this is why she should have watched all the way through before talking about it. It's very clear she watched all the, like, half the episode and then stopped. She didn't finish it. Because by the end, it, it shows that Fame Fatale was not a true feminist either. Because she was only using feminism as a gimmick to get sympathy from the Powerpuff Girls and to just kind of justify her actions. So, Anita, are you really saying that that her robbing a bank isn't at all bad? But, oh, but, but they made her a feminist. That's wrong. Like, there are feminists that use feminism as a way to, to, prom to do malicious shit. That has happened. Like, it's so dumb that, she's, that, that she even brought this episode up because this episode doesn't even shit on feminists. Or feminism. It's shitting on this one character who's using feminism the wrong way. If anything, you should be saying that this feminist is misusing feminism. Just because they make a character a feminist doesn't mean that, oh, well, now we have to 
welcome her into feminism and this and that. No, because there are people in feminism who don't, who use it to do malicious shit or use it as a way to get a, a personal gain. That's not what feminism is. Feminism is, to, is for equality, gender equality. That's what feminism is. But there are people who don't, who uh, either misunderstand feminism because they're listening to fem feminists that misuse the, uh, the ideals. Like Anita. Anita is using feminism to promote her agenda and to promote her shitty videos as a way to make her, her points more valid and validated. But she doesn't bring up any good points. That doesn't mean that feminism is to blame for Anita. Anita is to blame. Anita is the only person that can be held accountable for what she says, not feminism as a whole. Feminist did, feminism did not make Anita. Anita made herself. She decided to attach herself to feminism because she, she's a fucking leech. That's the only way she got 631,000 views because she preached feminism and these people who don't really have an analytical mind to think about her or question her agree with her. But when you actually start to dissolve and look into her arguments, they don't hold any value. And that, to me, is not good feminism or is or makes her a good feminist because she's not being analytical. She's not looking into what she's saying. She's not checking her facts. She obviously did not finish this episode. Otherwise, she would have known that... This this episode treats both sides equally because it brings up good points through feminism and it brings up good points on the other side. You can't say it's one or the other, it's both ways because you can't have feminism be this one true thing. Femme Fatale isn't the end-all, be-all icon of feminism in Powerpuff Girls, but she's treating it as if, since they said Femme Fatale is a feminist and made her a villain, the Powerpuff Girls cannot be used in feminism. That doesn't make any fucking sense. Because the Powerpuff Girls can be seen as a way to, uh, for, as role models. But whatever, whatever, Anita. Let's feminist is taken to a whole new level in adult animation shows such as South Park or Family Guy. In the episode I Am Peter Hear Me Roar, the Family Guy writers took a stab at feminist attorney Gloria Allred. Allred is known for taking on high-profile cases defending women who have been assaulted or harassed. In this attack, Family Guy writers created a character coincidentally named Gloria Ironbox, who brainwashes Peter into thinking he is a woman after he is accused of sexual harassment. The emasculation and feminization of Peter and his sudden transformation into a feminist is played for laughs. I can't respect men. Men are the reason our world is in such lousy shape. If men were as caring as women, we wouldn't have crime or violence. Because, you know, nothing is worse in a patriarchal society than being a woman. Except, maybe, being a feminist. In these fictional narratives, institutional oppression and wide-scale sexism just doesn't exist. What sexism is in Powerpuff Girls? Like, sex is... Uh, no, no, never mind. <sighs> Whatever. It's a carefully constructed world where feminism is no longer needed. Even the comic book world delves into this trope with Why the Last Man. When all the men on Earth die except for one, there is an extremist homicidal group called Daughters of the Amazons. The violent vigilante group is founded on the disdain and hatred of men and anyone who mourns the death of men, even though there aren't any more men. Let's get back to Veronica Mars. There's a nine episode story arc in the third season about a series of rapes that occur on the university. Possible trigger warning. Campus. A group of straw feminists on campus hold demonstrations, volunteer with the Ride Home Safe Campus program to escort young women home, and demand that the university institute an official sexual code of conduct. All of these are logical, rational, and important steps to creating safer co- No! No, 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 no. The only code of conduct, conduct that should be performed is don't rape people. Like. Men shouldn't have to live by a guidebook, like, oh, if you do this, this is rape, this isn't rape, like, like, it's obvious rape is wrong, like, what, what code of conduct do you need, like, rape is wrong, <laughs> like, what code of conduct is there, like, come on. College campuses. 
However, the writers quickly dismiss these characters as irrational, stubborn, pig-headed man- It is irrational to fucking do this. This is- it's like fucking- like, men have to live in fear of like, oh, what I might do might be considered rape. But I, I don't know how far that this show has was going with these code of conducts, sexual code of conducts, and I don't know how far Anita wants it to go. The only code of conduct that I was taught was, don't rape. If the girl says no, she means no, and you're not gonna, and don't, and don't bother. There you go. There you go. If you want to have sex and, you, and, you, and the girl says no, you know what to do. You don't. You don't do it. You just say okay, and then and you respect her wishes. You don't like like that. That that's it. There you go. Like come on. Haters, and it serves to fulfill the. And what about men who get raped? How about that? How about that? How about that, Anita? Talk about the the ma the male rape victims. Weird old stereotype about angry and militant women of color. The writers of Veronica Mars take the straw feminist to an obscene level by actually having them fake a rape in order to blame the fraternity. Women lying about- How is that in quotes fake a rape? Like, so, so it wasn't faked? What? ...about sexual assault is a grossly overused myth. Women generally don't put themselves through the social shame of admitting assault for petty personal revenge. But it, ha it has happened. There are women that actually do that. I know, I know, and that's that's very insane and, and crazy that you don't that 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 can't possibly happen. But it has happened. There are there are women that lie about getting raped. There are, there are I I've actually I know one. I know one person that 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 actually lied about it. So you you tell me, Anita. Does that mean that I, that I'm sexist because uh, she said that she lied about? Well, no, no, she didn't say that she lied, but it just didn't. It, it it's just fucking stupid that. She's like, oh yeah, no, no woman would lie about getting raped. Yeah, okay, just because, uh, you know, you shouldn't lie about being raped doesn't mean that no one lies about getting raped. It happens. It's, it's the whole thing, like, you know, you shouldn't use guns to shoot unarmed people, and yet people shoot unarmed people with guns. I, you know, it's like, just because people shouldn't lie about things doesn't mean that they're not, that, that they don't. There are people that do lie about things, Anita. I know it's a scary world out there, but there are people who lie about getting raped. Just, just saying. In just a handful of episodes, the creators of Veronica Mars undermined the work that thousands of students are doing globally on their campuses to end violence against women. While we see the straw feminist over and over again in television and movies, it's also unfortunately deployed on a regular basis by American talk shows and news pundits. Mainstream religious oh. and conservative news media often attack women with deliberate misrepresentations and extreme exaggerations of what feminism is. Do then obviously I'm I'm sexist because I am just show, showing off how she is not really a good feminist or has good feminist appeals or anything because it's it's so fucking uh. This false impression has been infused into the mainstream by popular talk show hosts such as Michael Savage, Glenn Beck and Bill O'Reilly. You may have heard the slur feminazi popularized by Rush Limbaugh, a term <laughs> used to discredit and demonize any woman fighting for social equality. The feminists, the feminazis, have been working for years to this end. Advance women by diminishing men. Yeah. The straw feminist- But, the, but that, that's what you're arguing for, Anita. You want men to, like, no, 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 no. Like, you're not fighting for equal, for equality, Anita. I know you think you are, but you're not. Um, I mean, it's just fucking- Often, and I do agree that feminazi is kind of a ridiculous term, but it's just fucking deal with it. This fucking like, see, like, oh yeah, see, it's just whatever at this point. Like, I I I don't really like using the term feminazi. Honestly, I just think that people like Anita should just be called what they are, idiots. Feminists is set up to perpetuate and advance the myth that feminism is no longer needed, that we've arrived at gender equality, and. But see that that. It, Right there, that's like something, like, kind of happening. There are people who are trying to make the argument that uh, we don't need feminism anymore. And that's not necessarily true, because feminism does serve a purpose. It just... Anita just gives it a bad name. <laughs> like, like, there are feminists that give feminism a bad representation, and it gives it 
and, and all that, but like, that doesn't mean that we should get rid of feminism. That's not the answer. Anyone who disagrees is quickly demeaned and portrayed as an extremist. This trope represents a backlash against feminism and groups supporting women's rights. As we make more gains towards equality, the backlash gets stronger. It's an old yet effective tactic, but clearly it's working because I often hear young women saying, I believe in the equal rights of women, but I'm not a feminist. This sentiment is a direct result of the straw feminist trope because women want- How, how do you know that? Because what if th that person got into a very heated conversation with a feminist and the feminist was saying dumb shit and she's like, you know, I want women rights, but like, you know, the, every feminist I talk to is fucking, it's like, it's like me saying like, I, 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 I've been to conversations with people who support Trump and yeah, I don't think all people who support Trump are idiots. I don't, I'm not going to say that, but a good, I, I've talked to like a lot of them and they all kind of make bad points and they sound uh, some of them sound racist, some of them sound like, you know, that they're out there, whatever. But then I, I, did, I did talk to, like, maybe one or two Trump supporters who actually sound rational and, like, kind of grounded as to why they're voting for Trump. So I'm not going to say all Trump supporters are, are bigots or anything, but I've talked to some of them that are. So, does that, it's just, that, that's the way that it is. I mean, if there's a group of people who like one thing, there's going to be a part of that group that might be the vocal minority of that group, or the or the vocal majority, whichever one, however you want to dice it, that might paint one thing bad. Like I might, like all those Trump supporters I talked to might have soured my uh, represent my um, outlook on Trump supporters. But I know that there are either is a few minority of Trump supporters that aren't like that. But I, uh, it's, it's so fucking want to distance themselves from the extreme and false representations they're seeing in TV, movies, and talk shows. We need to- Yeah, obviously. Obviously, it's from the TV and talk shows. Not like that they might have had a conversation with a few feminists that might have gotten- that might have went south, or that they might have not illustrated their points. Or they were talking to you, Anita. I mean, I, I would have- I could see why people would hate feminism just by watching your videos. We claim the title and fight back against the distorted and demeaning representations in the media just by watching and in real videos. life. And if y'all really do believe in the equality of women, then we need to continue this long legacy of feminism and fight for it. And Hollywood, get over your fear of strong, smart, talented women and stop contributing to the backlash by writing absurd and ridiculous straw feminist characters. Now I'll leave you with Polly Bergen saying something pretty awesome on the otherwise unremarkable show Commander in Chief. Look, just because it matters to mom doesn't mean it matters to me. I mean, I'm no feminist. So you don't believe that women should have rights equal to those of men. Well, of course I do. It's just... Well, then, might I suggest, my dear, that you look up the definition of feminist? Feminist don't... Yeah, okay. So, yeah, as you can see, she, like, tries to bring up good points, and then she says dumb shit right after. So, like, just by watching her videos, I could see why people don't like feminists and feminism, because... She says a lot of dumb shit that doesn't really have any any research done or anything that is reasonable. She brings up points, she brings up good points sometimes, but then it's like she diminishes it by making some general statement. Like, when people say, I'm not a feminist, she generalizes that saying, well, they must have watched TV and they must have, uh, have said that because of this. Or that, oh, there's no woman that would lie about getting raped. That is a myth and that doesn't happen. See, like that, that, those are generalizations, and she's naive to think that. She's naive to think that no woman would lie about getting raped. I'm not saying that, it, that it's a widespread issue, but it happens. It happens, and it's, and it's fucked up. Men do it too. I mean, it's fucked up on both ends of the, of the, of the aisle here. It's, there's no, like, well, it's okay for, no, 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 it's wrong regardless. Lying about rape is wrong. Bullying, it happens to everyone. It's not a gender issue, it's a issue. Uh, all, all these things, like, she makes, like, she tries to kind of narrow her points down, but then she just goes back to, to a generalizing. She doesn't stick to, she doesn't refine her points, she doesn't go further into it. She just kind of keeps going to general spectrums, and that doesn't really help in any argument. Because, I, you know, it would be easier for me to say that all feminists are like Anita. All feminists are like that, I could easily say that, and then just leave it at that. But I'm not going to say that because then someone could easily comment saying, 
Well, here's a list of feminists that don't that disagree with Anita. You could probably find a lot of feminists that do because that's the thing is that when you have a a, a an issue or a or a group of people, they not they don't all represent that one subject. There, it's all this diverse. Uh, opinions and outlooks on life and all this kind of stuff. So it would be pointless to make general statements because then you'll be never ending this conversation of of narrowing it down. You really need to narrow your your point down to a point where you don't need to specify exactly, but you need to specify enough if you're gonna make these arguments. She's way too general with general with her arguments. Every video I have seen of hers is general. It's never refined and it's never. Uh, uh, specified enough to where it's like, yeah, I can see that or I can agree with that. It's so general that it just leaves me with more questions. It leads me to want to uh, to comment and ask her more questions, but she disables comments. There's no way you can even discuss. You doesn't have her own little forum that you can go to or anything. You just have to watch this video and just take what she has to say. And you can't do that if you're gonna have these general opinions like this. You can't have a conversation this one-sided and leave it to these general points that could be easily dis dissected and taken down. I took down most of these points because I watched the uh, Powerpuff Girls episode. I have seen, I know I have friends who are feminists that don't say this kind of shit because they know what, they're, what the fuck they're talking about. You can't make general statements and have it be that way. You you can't. You have to have a good argument and you have to back it up. But that's my opinion. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and I might do more Anita videos. I don't know. I mean, there is some fun watching her, her little videos, but that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.